Like the landfills, this one near Peterborough, the garbage reality is bigger than you might realize. A lot of products are heavily packaged. That's something that ends up at the landfill. I would say it's a problem, uh, probably a massive problem. But unless you stare at a landfill, Canadians generally don't see the garbage. Dan Hornwig was the waste advisor for the World Bank, has spent a career looking at it. Canadian cities are probably among the cleanest in the world, and we're probably the best at picking up garbage, truck for truck, dollar for dollar, probably almost but than anyone. But that doesn't mean Canada is is good in terms of the waste it produces. No, no, no. If there was a, a garbage Olympics, every year we'd come into metal rounds as the largest waste generators in the world. It's a good line, but it's also a sad truth that has the heft of numbers behind it. 25 million tons, that's how much municipal waste Canada gets rid of a year. Industrial, institutional, commercial mostly. Too big a number to grasp? Try this one. It amounts to 700 kilograms per person per year, not recycling garbage. 2012 was the last time comparisons were published of countries with similarly advanced economies and urbanization. Canada was producing more waste per person than any of them, including the U.S. Well, it correlates almost perfectly. Lots of garbage, lots of greenhouse gas emissions. So waste reduction, greenhouse gas emission reduction. The numbers tend to rise and fall as the economy does. But again, if we don't see it, we forget it. Torontonians were sure forced to look in 2009 during the garbage strike. And in an odd consequence of the horror of 9-11, the border closed for a few days, meaning all the waste Canada exports to the U.S. for processing just piled up. A lot still gets sent south because it's cheaper that way. Ontario moved nearly a third of its waste to the U.S. last year, is really hoping trade talks don't interfere with that. Sometimes the waste can't be moved out of sight, certainly not in the not-so-pristine north. You don't have to go anywhere, and you'll see bags, plastic bags, and, and debris. The, the wind picks this stuff up and blows it all over the place. This is a Iqaluit, where there is no recycling, no incinerator, and only one landfill. And there are some acrid memories of what happened in 2014. The landfill spontaneously caught fire and burned for four months, the plumes rising like a volcano, dump cano, they called it. It was declared the worst such fire in both North and South America. Schools were closed because of the toxic smoke. Jim Little is trying to help trying to start a composting program. Organic material is not waste. We make it waste. By putting it in landfills, we're creating, you know, a future methane generator. That's what that is over there. But just as it's expensive to get goods to the Arctic, it's hard getting waste out. And all landfills fill up. This one in Peterborough has another 15 years, then something else will have to be done. And probably a better approach than out of sight, out of mind. Now, for some Canadians who live near the ocean, one way to hide garbage seems irresistible. A research project has uncovered shocking graveyards of household items that lurk off the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. So here is Chris O'Neill Yates with the scope of the problem and the search for solutions. Beneath the rugged splendor of Newfoundland's coastline lives a dirty little secret. This video shows what was discovered in 18 harbors over the past 10 years. The ocean has become a garbage dump. Research scientists Corey Morris and Dan Porter are presenting their findings. When we go back year after year, we were finding or observing new garbage showing up. Uh, large refrigerators, uh, washers, dryers type of appliances, uh, as well as uh, flooring or carpet, uh, large items. If you take a walk along the coastline almost anywhere in Newfoundland, this is the sort of stuff you'll see. But it's not what you see that concerns scientists. It's what's lurking underneath the ocean that's harming everything in the environment. One of the most serious dangers to fish are discarded fishing nets, called ghost nets. The plastic in these nets could take 600 years to break down. 
meanwhile catching everything in their wake. But when Dan Porter talks to the locals about the garbage in their harbours, the response is usually the same. They always say, well, I didn't do it. Somebody else did it sort of thing. But it always ends up in the water. I think once it went in the harbour, it was gone, it was out of sight. And they thought they just never thought anything else about it. The community could be beautiful and spectacular and, and nice scenery, and, but if you get in and look closer in, in the ocean, uh, problems are, are still happening. Sixth grader Caitlin Healy set transfixed throughout the presentation. She got the message. I feel like people should be doing more of a thing to stop this because if we don't do anything about it. It could seriously affect the ecosystems in the ocean. It could ruin our world as like a whole because if there's no oceans and there's no fish and that's the basically one of the bottoms of our food chain. These young people do have the power to end ocean dumping, says Porter. I'm kind of hoping that doing this kind of project, make people aware of what's under the water in the harbors, will help educate them, and hopefully that will slow down the amount of garbage that goes in the ocean. More nights like this, more public education, a small step towards changing attitudes that led to this in the first place. Chris O'Neill Yates, CBC News, St. John's.